Upon parting ways, Lin Dong was so infuriated by his romantic rival that he succumbed to unconsciousness, spitting blood. Upon awakening, he discovered himself endowed with a transcendental system of opulence, mandating his expenditure of countless trillions. Henceforth, Lin Dong ascended to the pinnacle of existence, proclaiming, No more pretenses, for I am a billionaire of untold wealth. I lay my cards upon the table. This is the thirdly part of the novel. For other parts, please refer to the description of this video or the video list on the channel. On this day, Lin Dong spent his time at the Lakeside Club, engaging in lively conversations until dusk when he parted ways with the others. Exiting the Lakeside Club, Lin Dong drove his limited edition Bugatti Chiron, accompanied by his former muse Yao Shui, towards the Sheraton Hotel. Yao Shui resided at the Sheraton, and Lin Dong intended to drop her off first before seeking out his cousin Wang Li. In the car, Mr. Lin, thank you, Yao Shui expressed her gratitude. Today, if it weren't for Lin Dong, she would have been in dire straits. She had no doubt about Yen Yang's capability. Even her boss feared this man. Slightly turning her head to glance at Lin Dong's profile, Yao Shui felt a twinge of infatuation. Whether in appearance, physique, or personality, he belonged to a superlative caliber, not to mention the intimidating background that even Yen Yang feared. Such a man was like a star in the night sky, dazzling wherever he went. She couldn't help but wonder what kind of woman could match such an outstanding man perhaps only a woman of equal stature could suffice. Yao Shui could only conceal this infatuation in her heart. It's nothing, just a small favor, Lin Dong replied, Miss Yao, actually, I quite like the movies you've acted in. Really? Yao Shui exclaimed with surprise. She hadn't expected someone of Lin Dong's stature to pay attention to her. It truly made her feel honored. Lin Dong paused for a moment. Is it necessary to be so astonished? You are, after all, a rising star, captivating numerous admirers not only with your films but also adorning two swimsuit posters in our dormitory. But of course, that's not something to be disclosed. Indeed, I do quite like them. Then, Mr. Lin, which of my movies do you like? Yao Shui inquired. Lin Dong was about to respond when his phone rang. Pulling over, he glanced at the caller ID, it was his cousin Wang Li. Answering the call, Lin Dong said, Hello, Wang Li, I've arrived in whose city I'll come over to you right away. Brother, I'm at the glorious KTV, please come and save me. I think someone drugged me, I feel dizzy. Wang Li's weak voice came through the phone. Lin Dong was startled, realizing the severity of the situation. Quick! Send me your location, I'll come right away, hold on. After concluding the call, Lin Dong turned to Yao Shui, Miss Yao, I'm terribly sorry, but I have an urgent matter to attend to. Would you mind? Sensing Lin Dong's urgency, Yao Shui interrupted, Mr. Lin, if you have something to attend to, please go ahead. My accommodation is just ahead, I'll walk back myself. Thank you, Miss Yao, I'll treat you to dinner next time, Lin Dong said. After Yao Shui got off the car, Lin Dong accelerated, ensuring his driving skills were up to par, effortlessly enhancing them to mastery level. Yao Shui watched him drive away, feeling somewhat disappointed. He didn't even leave a contact and he mentioned treating me to dinner, but it feels insincere. However, the relief of her crisis being resolved quickly lifted her spirits. Retrieving sunglasses and a hat from her bag, she put them on and headed towards the Sheraton Hotel. At the glorious KTV, in a private room, Wang Li was locked in the restroom, calling Lin Dong. Originally, she had come to the KTV with a few sisters to relax, but unexpectedly encountered several senior male classmates from the same school. Eventually, they all merged into one room to party. Then, a few unfamiliar people arrived midway, seeming acquainted with some of her classmates. Consequently, what was initially a small gathering turned into a gathering of over a dozen people, most of whom she didn't know. Her group discussed leaving several times but was stopped. After all, they were just a few helpless girls faced with seven or eight men. Prevented from leaving, they were coerced into staying, with the condition that each of them had to drink a glass of wine unable to refuse, they only wished to finish the drink quickly and leave. However, after Wang Li drank, she started feeling dizzy and weak, realizing she had been drugged. Seizing the opportunity, she made her way to the restroom, contemplating calling Lin Dong, who had mentioned he would be in the city today. Meanwhile, Lin Dong was rushing towards the glorious KTV, but due to the urban traffic, his speed was limited. Checking the distance, he estimated it would take 20 minutes at this rate, unsure if Wang Li could hold on for that long. Thus, he made a call to Yi Hong. 
Hello? Lin, what's up? Yi Hong's voice came through the phone. Brother Yi, do you know the owner of Glorious KTV? Can you get in touch with him? Lin Dong urgently asked. Glorious KTV? Of course. That lad Wang Chang is the owner of Glorious KTV. Why do you need him? Before Yi Hong could finish, Lin Dong hung up he didn't have time for explanations. After ending the call, Lin Dong dialed Wang Chang's number. Lin brother? Wang brother, listen to me first. My cousin is currently in Glorious KTV, locked in a private room, drugged. I'm on my way there, but it'll take 20 minutes. I don't know if she can hold on that long. Please, have someone from Glorious KTV look after her. After hearing Lin Dong's explanation, Wang Chang understood the seriousness of the situation. Don't worry, Lin brother, I'll take care of this properly. Your cousin won't suffer any harm. After hanging up, Wang Chang immediately called the manager of Glorious KTV and dispatched over 20 security guards to the private room. Meanwhile, shortly after Lin Dong finished talking to Wang Chang, Wan Li called him again. Bro, where are you? They're knocking on the door outside. Wang Li's voice was filled with fear. Dear sister, fear not, for help is on its way, just hold on for a moment longer no, two minutes, only two minutes, and aid will arrive. Brother, I'm so scared. Please hurry. Bam! Wang Li's words were abruptly interrupted as the restroom door was forcefully pushed open by someone. Why is it taking so long? Your sisters are all waiting for you, a stranger's voice echoed. Ah! I don't know you. Leave me alone. There was sudden silence on the phone. Damn it! Lin Dong cursed aloud. Now, he too was burning with anger. Wang Li, he truly regarded her as his own sister. Having lived with her family for two years, everyone treated him well, never treating him as an outsider. Even with a little cousin, his aunt and uncle still treated him like their own son. If something were to happen to Wang Li in front of him, how could he face his aunt and uncle? How could he face himself? But right now, he was helpless. All he could do was hope that Wang Chang would keep his word. Upon hearing his sister Wang Li scream on the phone, Lin Dong could no longer care about anything else despite the heavy traffic on the road, he immediately switched to overtaking mode. One by one, he left the cars behind, narrowly avoiding collisions several times, relying on his expert driving skills. The resplendent KTV. The private room marked. Su Wanli was knocking on the door outside the restroom. Wang Li, who had just entered, hadn't come out yet, and the drug should have taken effect by now. He was prepared to break in forcibly. The thought of Wang Li, this exceptional student sister, soon belonging to him, filled Su Wanli with excitement. Wasn't all this effort today just for this moment? After knocking several times with no response, Su Wanli grew impatient and kicked the door open. Seeing Wang Li making a call, he quickly strode over, snatched the phone from her hand, hung up, and dragged her out. Pulling Wang Li out of the restroom, he saw everyone busy with their respective targets Su Wan Li couldn't hold back anymore, and he hugged Wang Li from behind. Due to the effects of the drug, Wang Li was weak and powerless, unable to resist. Even if she weren't drugged, she would be no match for an adult man. She was already in despair. Dragged into the private room, she saw her sisters being taken advantage of by men, some even having their hands inside their clothes. Although their minds were clear, their bodies were powerless, allowing themselves to be exploited. Wang Li could already foresee the fate awaiting them. The man who pulled her out was now embracing her from behind, and she struggled desperately, but to no avail. Just then, the door of the private room was violently pushed open from outside. Immediately, over 20 security guards armed with electric batons barged in. Nobody move. If anyone dares to move, I'll make your heads bloom, commanded a guard. Li Hu, the manager of the luxurious KTV, walked in from outside everyone in the private room was terrified, and no one dared to move. Who is Miss Wang Li? Li Hu inquired. I am. I am. Wang Li hurriedly broke free from Su Wan Li's embrace, attempting to run to Li Hu, thinking he must be the one Lin Dong sent to rescue her. But after taking two steps, her legs gave out, and she collapsed to the ground. Hurry, help Miss Wang onto the sofa, Li Hu instructed the guards nearby. Two guards closest to Wan Li quickly helped her up. Li Hu walked up to Su Wan Li and said, You have some nerve, huh? Daring to pull this stunt in my territory? And even pulling it off on a friend of the big boss. 
What do you think should be done about this? Suan Li was so frightened that his legs buckled, and he knelt before Li Hu, slapping himself while saying, Sir, I was wrong, please spare me. We've dined together, my father is Su Zhongtian. He was truly terrified. The Li Hu was just the manager of the luxurious KTV, he was known in the underworld as a ruthless man moreover, he now had the backing of the big boss behind the scenes. The identity of the big boss of the luxurious KTV was extremely mysterious, while his father was just a small businessman, making them worlds apart. Wang Li was actually a friend of the big boss of the luxurious KTV? Those two boys had really dug their own graves. Su Wanli felt that from today onwards, his good days were over. Not only could he not escape this disaster, but he would also drag down his father. Li Hu looked at Su Wanli, who was kneeling before him and repeatedly slapping himself. A few years ago, he wouldn't have bothered saying anything and would have just acted. But since following the big boss, he had learned a lot. Sometimes violence couldn't solve problems. As a superior, using violence to solve problems was the lowest behavior. He now preferred to use his identity, background, and strength to suppress others, just like the person kneeling before him at the mention of his name, he immediately bowed and apologized. You, come here too. Li Hu called out to the others. Trembling, they came over and knelt beside Su Wanli, then began slapping themselves. Su Wanli didn't dare to challenge Li Hu, let alone them. A few minutes later, the faces of those kneeling on the ground were swollen, blood oozing from their mouths, but they dared not stop. If Li Hu personally took action, it wouldn't be as simple as just slapping themselves. All right, that's enough, Li Hu said. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. They breathed a sigh of relief. At that moment, Lin Dong arrived. Upon entering, he saw over 30 security guards with electric batons standing in the private room, with several people kneeling in the middle, their faces swollen and bloodied, while his little sister sat on the sofa. Sister. Brother. Wang Li, upon seeing Lin Dong, couldn't help but want to cry Lin Dong quickly went over and hugged Wang Li. It's okay now. It's okay. Lin Dong comforted her. You must be Mr. Lin. Li Hu also noticed Lin Dong. Hello. I'm Lin Dong. Thank you for saving my sister, Lin Dong said gratefully. Mr. Lin, there's no need to be polite. Such an incident on my premises warrants an apology from me to you, Li Hu said courteously. These are individuals the big boss instructed to be taken care of properly, so I naturally cannot afford to neglect them, Li Hu explained, acknowledging Lin Dong's high status. Mr. Lin, how would you like to handle these few? Li Hu asked, looking at the individuals on the ground who dared not even breathe. From their conversation earlier, they could naturally sense Lin Dong's extraordinary status, probably a friend of the big boss of the luxurious KTV. Lin Dong glanced at the kneeling individuals on the ground. If something had really happened to Wang Li, he might not have been able to control himself and would have rushed to incapacitate them but now that Wang Li was fine, he had calmed down. Sister, how do you want to deal with them? Lin Dong asked Wang Li. Brother, I just want to leave here quickly, Wang Li said weakly. Then let Wang Chang take care of them, Lin Dong said, helping Wang Li up to leave. Brother, those few are my roommates, we came together, Wang Li said. Can they leave? Lin Dong asked Wang Li's roommates. Yes, we can, they replied in unison. Then let's go together. Lin Dong led the way with Wang Li, while her roommates followed behind. After Lin Dong left, Li Hu took out his phone and made a call. Is everything taken care of? Wang Chang asked. It's taken care of. Mr. Lin has left, and his sister is fine, Li Hu replied. Good job. But, Mr. Lin asked me to deal with these few individuals before he left. What's their background? They're second generation kids of some small businessmen. Put them in and handle their families yourself. Yes, boss. After leaving the KTV with Wang Li and her three roommates, Lin Dong realized the sports car could only accommodate two people, leaving three behind. In the end, Lin Dong had to take them to a nearby hotel. Originally planning to book one room for each, they insisted on staying together out of fear, so Lin Dong ended up booking two suites, one for himself and one for the four of them. After settling everyone, Lin Dong returned to his room and took a shower. Lying on the bed, he pondered over the recent events, still feeling a lingering fear. 
Fortunately, his sister was safe, otherwise, he would have been haunted by guilt for life. If he hadn't joined SCC and met Wang Chang, things might have been more difficult today. So he realized. Since he had more money than he could spend and needed to expand his influence, he decided to spend more to make friends more friends meant more options, and one never knew when they might need each other's help, just like today. After realizing this, Lin Dong made a call to Wang Chang. Brother Lin. Is your sister okay? Wang Chang asked over the phone. She's fine. Thank you for today's help. Feel free to ask me for anything you need in the future, Lin Dong replied. Brother Lin, you're too kind. I also bear responsibility for today's incident since it happened on my turf, causing trouble for your sister. It's not your fault, Brother Wang. It's just that she wasn't cautious enough. By the way, Brother Wang, if you have any projects that need funding in the future, feel free to approach me. I'll invest, but I won't involve myself in management, just as a shareholder. Upon hearing Lin Dong's words, Wang Chang was delighted. This was his purpose in getting close to Lin Dong. Since Lin Dong dared to donate 11 billion to SCC to elevate his membership level, his wealth could be imagined he was not just from an ordinary wealthy family but a top-tier one. Befriending such a person was undoubtedly beneficial. Since Brother Lin regards me highly, I do have a project on hand. Let's discuss it at the charity banquet at Lake Heart Club tomorrow night. How about it? Great, see you tomorrow. Wang Chang hung up the phone, humming a tune with a particularly good mood. Behind him, a certain B-list actress giving him a massage asked, What happened that made young Master Wang so happy? I've met a god of wealth. Shouldn't I be happy? The actress was momentarily stunned. To them, young Master Wang was their god of wealth. Who could possibly be his god of wealth? Her status didn't allow her to touch such things. After Lin Dong finished the call with Wang Chang, he called Yi Hong as well, informing him of his willingness to invest if needed. Yi Hong also invited him to attend the charity dinner tomorrow in another suite, after the four girls had taken a shower, their bodies gradually recovered. Although the recent experience had left them fearful, they were still carefree girls at heart. Lying on the bed, they began gossiping again. Lily, was the person who saved us really your cousin? Of course. How was my cousin? He's not just good, he's practically a male god. Didn't you say your cousin was pitiful? That his parents were gone since he was young, and his uncle wasn't good to him? You've been living with them for two years, right? Yeah, that's how it is. But didn't you see just now? The manager of the luxurious KTV was so polite to him, calling him Mr. Lin. Do you know what kind of place Golden Brilliance is? Did you see those scumbags kneeling and slapping themselves in front of the manager? Your cousin must be hiding a lot from you. I don't know what's going on. I'll ask him tomorrow. Oh, does your brother have a girlfriend? Yes. Her name is Jiang Shan. They've the been together since high school. Why? Are you interested in my brother? Want to be my sister-in-law? Get lost. The next morning, Wang Li's roommates took a taxi back to school. Brother, I have something to ask you. Wang Li said after seeing her roommates leave. I know there are many questions now. Let's go, I'll take you somewhere quiet to talk, Lin Dong said, leading Wang Li back to the parking lot of Golden Brilliance. Let us embark. Lin Dong produced the car key and unlocked the door of the Bugatti Veyron, addressing Wang Li. Wang Li gazed upon the dazzling sports car before her, momentarily perplexed. Brother, is this yours? Wang Li inquired, somewhat falteringly. It is indeed mine. Please, enter the vehicle, Lin Dong declared before taking the driver's seat. Ah, splendid. Wang Li hazily climbed into the car. Lin Dong led Wang Li to the seaside throughout the journey, the car's turning heads rate was nearly 100%. Numerous individuals paid them homage along the way. Driving on the road, ordinary vehicles kept their distance, even at red lights. Clearly, they were not to be trifled with. The two found a quiet spot by the seaside, leaning against the railing as the sea breeze brushed past them. Wang Xiaomei, I know you have many questions. Feel free to ask whatever you wish, Lin Dong remarked, gazing towards the distant sea. Brother, is that car yours? Wang Li inquired. Yes, I just bought it yesterday, right here in this lakeside city. I came this time to see you and to purchase this car, Lin Dong explained. 
How much does this car cost? 80 million. How much exactly? 80 million. Where did you get so much money? Rob a bank? If I robbed a bank, could I still be here chatting with you? Besides, which bank could yield 80 million? Then where did you get the money from? I earned it. How did you earn it? I can't explain it in a few words, but rest assured, I haven't done anything illegal just know that your brother is now a bona fide tycoon. Does mom know? She doesn't. Who else knows? So far, only you. Really? How much hush money are you prepared to give me then? Whatever amount you desire. You lack sincerity. The two engaged in a lengthy conversation. Despite not having seen each other for a long time, they felt no sense of unfamiliarity. On that day, Lin Dong took Wang Li to explore various malls in the lakeside city, purchasing many luxurious clothing and cosmetics. Wang Li didn't hold back either. This was her brother. Now that he was wealthy, it was only natural for him to indulge his sister at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, Lin Dong drove Wang Li in the Bugatti Veyron to the Lake Heart Club. With a car like the Bugatti Veyron, no one dared to stop them at the club entrance. After parking the car, they had to take a yacht to reach the central gathering place on the lake. At the lakeside, several yachts were waiting to pick up guests. They boarded one casually, and the yacht's captain steered directly towards the center of the lake. Leaning against the edge of the yacht, Lin Dong silently marveled at the clear lake water below. These affluent individuals truly knew how to indulge themselves. Brother, why did you bring me here? Wang Li's voice sounded from behind. I'm taking you to a gathering to meet two people. In the future, if I'm not in the city, you can seek their help. One of them is the illustrious boss, Lin Dong explained. Lin Dong and Wang Li arrived at the center of the lake. After disembarking from the yacht, a waiter led them to the second floor of the building please, the waiter opened the door to the second floor hall and gestured to the two of them. Lin Dong and Wang Li entered the hall. They instantly felt like they had stepped into another world. The hall was at least 5,000 square meters, extravagantly decorated, with dazzling lights, and over a hundred people inside, chatting in groups of twos and threes. More than a dozen graceful-looking, tall waiters shuttled back and forth in the hall, carrying drinks and food. It was Wan Li's first time in such a place, feeling somewhat nervous, she gently tugged on Lin Dong's clothes. Don't worry. Relax, take whatever you like to eat. Treated like your own home, Lin Dong reassured her, patting Wang Li's shoulder. In truth, he hadn't experienced such a scene either and was a bit nervous. But then he remembered, he was now the richest man in the world. He shouldn't be nervous, if anything, others should be nervous around him the two walked into the hall together. As Lin Dong passed by a waiter, he casually picked up a glass of wine. Taking a sip, it was quite good. Wang Li was more reserved. Brother Lin. You're here. Wang Chang walked over with a glass of wine in his hand. Wang brother, sorry to keep you waiting. Let me introduce you, this is my cousin, Wang Li, studying at the university in the lakeside city. Please take care of her in the future, Lin Dong introduced. Wang brother, don't mention it. Your cousin is my cousin too, right? If she needs anything in the future, just contact me. In this lakeside city, I, Wang Chang, still have some face, Wang Chang said, handing Wang Li a gold-plated business card. Thank you, Brother Chang, Wang Li whispered. Cousin, feel free to roam around. Take whatever you want to eat, treat it like your own home. I'll talk some business with your brother, Wang Chang said. Both brothers, please go ahead. Wang Chang led Lin Dong to a private room on the third floor as they entered, two people were already seated inside. One man and one woman, the man was probably in his forties, with a refined demeanor. The woman appeared to be in her thirties, wearing light makeup and exuding the charm of a mature woman. Wang brother, let me introduce you. This is Mr. Xiao Jia, Mr. Xiao, and this is Miss Tang Ling, Miss Tang. This is my brother, Lin Dong, also the fourth shareholder I brought in, Wang Chang made brief introductions. After shaking hands with both individuals, Lin Dong took his seat. At this point, Wang Chang began to explain the details of the project. In essence, Wang Chang had connections in a non-national area where he acquired a diamond mine. He had personally visited the site, and the quality was exceptional, with a total investment of around 15 to 20 billion yuan. 
Wang Chang planned to invest 5 billion himself, accounting for 40%, and release the remaining 60%, equivalent to 10 billion yuan because he still needed to handle various procedures and establish connections, he intended to retain a few extra percentage points. In other words, Lin Dong and the other three would contribute 10 billion yuan, accounting for 60%. Xiao Jie and Tang Ling would each contribute to 5 billion yuan, accounting for 15% each. There would still be 5 billion yuan left for the remaining 30% share. Lin brother, if you find the investment insufficient, we can bring in another shareholder. I personally inspected this mine, and it's undoubtedly a new discovery, Wang Chang addressed Lin Dong. Not enough? Lin Dong felt it was too little. Just 50 billion. All right, I'll invest 50 billion for a 30% stake. Very well, it's settled then. I'll send you the documents later. Come, let's have a toast first. After Lin Dong left, Wang Li began to wander around the hall, gradually relaxing as she found herself largely ignored by others, which suited her just fine but when she reached the food area, she couldn't resist lingering. Every dessert here looked incredibly delicious. Mmm, this one is so sweet. This one is so crispy. This one smells heavenly. This one is so soft. Wang Li sampled each one eagerly, taking her favorites onto her plate. Ha! Huh? Wang Li spotted someone and hurried over. Are you Yao Shui? Yao Shui was chatting with a senior figure from the film industry when she was interrupted. Yao Shui looked over to see a young girl in her twenties. Hello, I am Yao Shui. Wow! You really are Yao Shui. I love the movies you've made. Can I take a photo with you? My dorm sisters are big fans of yours, Wang Li exclaimed with delight. Thank you for your support. I'll make sure to produce more good movies. After taking the photo, Yao Shui left. Wang Li posted the picture on her social media with the caption, Guess who this is? Then she put her phone away and started looking for new targets. Hey, isn't that the popular actor Wang Kaixian? Isn't that the diva Ling Qingqiu? Suddenly, a young girl appeared in the hall, holding snacks in one hand and a phone in the other, specifically seeking to take photos with celebrities. Almost every star would agree to take a photo with her because everyone present at the event was a prominent figure in the lakeside city. Although this young girl seemed a bit naive, who could guarantee that she wasn't brought here by some big shot? Wang Li eagerly sought out celebrities for photos, excitedly collecting seven or eight snapshots with A-list stars already. She couldn't wait to show off to her classmates back at school. Wang Li? As Wang Li was busy checking her phone, a voice sounded. Wang Li looked up to see a heavily made-up young woman holding the arm of a middle-aged man. Wang Minjun? Wang Li asked the person in front of her looked a lot like Wang Minjun from her class, but because of the heavy makeup, she wasn't entirely sure. It's really you. How did you sneak in here? This is the most high-level gathering in the lakeside city. Let me guess, you must be here to work part-time as a waitress, right? Wang Minjun said sarcastically. No way. I came with my brother. Wang Li retorted. Your brother? Is he a security guard here? Is he planning to quit? How dare he bring people in casually like this, Wang Minjun sneered. Wang Minjun, don't you dare badmouth my brother. Wang Li said indignantly. Min Min, why don't you introduce this beauty, the old man next to Wang Minjun spoke up. This is our classmate Wang Li. Wang Minjun reluctantly introduced, completely misreading the man's intentions. Hello, Miss Wang Li. The old man reached out his hand to shake Wang Li's hand. Wang Minjun, is this your father? Wang Minjun. The old man. One sentence ignited the anger of both parties Wang Li, if you apologize now. Give me your contact information and promise to meet me when I ask, I'll let you off today. Otherwise, not only will you be expelled, but your brother's job won't be safe either, the old man said. Boyfriend? Wang Li was stunned. Oops, said the wrong thing. Mainly because Wang Minjun always flaunted her wealthy background at school. Always carrying designer bags, wearing branded clothes, and being chauffeured around in luxury cars. Who would have thought she'd have such a boyfriend? It's disgusting. But a mistake is a mistake. You were bad-mouthing my brother. I won't apologize. Wang Li huffed. Unwilling to stay, Wang Li turned to leave but was stopped by Wang Minjun. After Wang Minjun grabbed Wang Li's hand, she began to shout loudly. 
Where are the organizers? Where are the organizers? This person sneaked in to eat and drink for free, took photos with celebrities everywhere, and even showed off outside I sent anyone going to do something? It wasn't me. Stop pulling me. Wang Li struggled desperately. Their argument attracted the attention of some onlookers. Gradually, more and more people gathered around. After all, it was rare to see someone causing trouble at such an event, and everyone found it quite intriguing. At this point, the event organizer's staff also approached. What's going on? The staff asked. She's the one. She sneaked in to eat and drink for free, took photos with celebrities everywhere, Wang Minjun pointed at Wang Li. Miss, please show your invitation card, the staff asked Wang Li. Because today the organizers had booked the entire Lake Heart Club for this charity banquet, basically, all the influential bosses in the lakeside city would receive invitations. And the invitation should be presented upon entering the club but because Lin Dong's car was too impressive, no one dared to stop them. I, I don't have an invitation. Wang Li almost cried in panic, with so many people watching. You see. I told you she sneaked in to eat and drink for free. Shame on you, organizers. Letting anyone in. Wang Minjun said arrogantly. Security. Security, the staff called out. Soon, several security guards approached. Escort this lady out, the staff instructed the guards. Wait a moment. Two voices chimed in simultaneously. One belonged to the aloof Tian Ho Li Qingqiu. The other was Yao Shui, one of the newly emerging Four Little Flowers. She was the one I brought in, my temporary assistant, Li Qingqiu said. Yes, I can attest to that. Yao Shui added smoothly. Li Qingqiu indeed had a fondness for Wang Li, this lively and lovely young girl. Seeing her standing there alone, somewhat pitiful, stirred a sense of compassion in her, prompting her to offer assistance. For her, it was just a small gesture and Yao Shui, upon witnessing Wang Li's plight, was reminded of her own experience yesterday, where she was rescued by a benefactor. Hence, she also wanted to help Wang Li. With two big stars vouching for Wang Li, the security guards dared not intervene. At this moment, the man standing beside Wang Minjun spoke up. Ladies, refrain from taking everything upon yourselves. Some actions entail consequences, he remarked. Zhang Shuqing naturally recognized these two big stars. However, despite his multi-billion dollar worth, he knew there were plenty of formidable figures in this hall. But certainly not including these two. Stars? Merely so in the eyes of ordinary people. In the presence of figures like him, they were nothing more than actors. Wang Minjun interjected at this point, you're mistaken. Wang Li is my classmate, still a university student. How could she be your assistant? Moreover, she just said her brother brought her here, and her brother must be one of the security guards here. Miss, may I ask what your brother's name is? The staff member inquired. My brother's name is Lin Dong. Wang Li replied with a hint of distress. Lin Dong? Is there anyone among you named Lin Dong? The staff member asked the security guards. The guards glanced at each other and replied, none. Yao Shui's heart skipped a beat upon hearing Wang Li mention her brother Lin Dong. Could it be the Lin Dong who saved me yesterday? Just as she was about to speak, Wang Li continued, My brother was just taken away by someone named Wang Chang. They said they're going to discuss business, seem to have gone upstairs. Wang Chang? At the mention of this name, everyone present was startled. In whose city, there seemed to be only Wang Chang from the Wang family. He was among the top echelons of whose city. How could her brother be discussing business with Wang Chang? How inferior could he be? The staff and Zhang Shuqing were also flustered Wang Chang was not someone they could afford to offend. In whose city, Wang Chang was notorious. If he treated you as a friend, he would give you his all. If he treated you as an enemy, he would spare no effort to eradicate you. Countless small business owners had been ruined by him in various ways in whose city. Hence, a saying circulated in whose city circles. Even if you can't be Wang Chang's friend, you absolutely cannot be his enemy. Zheng Shuqing thought of this and began to sweat profusely. His worth of several billion was nothing in Wang Chang's eyes, he could bankrupt him in minutes. Just then, Lin Dong and Wang Chang finished their discussion and came downstairs. Lin Dong scanned around, not seeing Wang Li, but noticing a crowd gathered in the middle of the hall. He hurried over and parted the crowd, 
only to see his cousin Wang Li being held by the arm by a heavily made-up young woman Wang Li seemed somewhat distressed, trying to break free but unable to, her eyes already moist. Sister! Lin Dong called out. Brother! Upon hearing Wang Li's call, Wang Minjun instinctively loosened her grip, allowing Wang Li to break free and run to Lin Dong, embracing him. It's okay. Everything's fine, Lin Dong comforted. What's going on? At this moment, Wang Chang also walked in and asked. Trouble. At the sight of Wang Chang, Zhang Xuqing's mind went blank, almost falling over. The staff also wiped the cold sweat from their foreheads and quietly recounted the recent events to Wang Chang. Who is he? After listening, Wang Chang pointed at Zhang Xuqing and asked. Wang Xiao, he's Zhang Xuqing, the boss of Shangyun Real Estate, someone from the onlookers spoke up. Mr. Zhang, right? You have three days to pack up and leave Hu City completely, or else I'll personally take action after three days, Wang Chang declared coldly Wang Xiao, I beg you, spare me. It's all because of this woman. She's the one who harmed me. Zhang Xuqing pleaded. After speaking, Zhang Xuqing slapped Wang Minjun in the face. Wang Minjun was directly slapped to the ground, completely bewildered. Zhang Xuqing quickly knelt down and begged for mercy. Being told to leave Hu City completely within three days was more agonizing than losing his life. He had several billion worth, but not several billion in cash. If he really had several billion in cash, he could leave without a second thought, and he could thrive anywhere with that money. But his billions were fixed assets. Having to deal with them within three days, he didn't know how much they would depreciate. Moreover, with Wang Xiao issuing a decree tonight, it was uncertain if anyone would dare to buy. Furthermore, he had recently invested a lot of money in a project leaving now would mean losing money. In the end, he might go from being a multi-billionaire boss to a penniless beggar, with several mistresses and two illegitimate children waiting for him to support. I won't repeat myself. Wang Chang said expressionlessly. Zhang Xuqing had already been in despair. But a voice rang out in everyone's ears. Wang Chang, are you bullying people here again? Yi Hong walked in. President Yi, please save me. We've collaborated before. I'm Zhang Xuqing from Shanyun Real Estate. Zhang Xuqing grasped at the chance like a drowning man clutching at a straw. If there was anyone in whose city who could save him, Yi Hong was definitely one of them. As the second young master of the Yi family, he was originally just the second in line to inherit. But he forcefully changed the situation, competing evenly with his elder brother. The elders in the family were also undecided on who should inherit the Yi family. In the end, they simply gave them a sum of money and let them develop freely outside for 10 years after 10 years, whoever performed better would be chosen as the heir to the Yi family. Five years have passed, and it is said that Yi Hong has firmly grasped the advantage. Old Yi! I didn't bully anyone. It was him who bullied Lin's brother's cousin. What should we do? Wang Chang pointed at Lin Dong. Sure enough, Yi Hong saw Lin Dong holding a young woman. Oh? Bullied Lin's little brother's cousin? You're quite audacious. Yi Hong turned to Zhang Xuqing and asked. Ha? Huh? Zhang Xuqing was still a bit puzzled. Wang Chang, how did you handle it? I told him to leave Hu City within three days. Three days? That's too long. I think one day should be enough, Yi Hong said, and Zhang Xuqing promptly fainted. With both bigwigs in whose city against him, there was no possibility of turning the tables. He collapsed from a sudden rush of blood to the head. Throw him out, call an ambulance for him. If he doesn't wake up, so be it if he does, tell him that what was said tonight still stands, Wang Chang instructed the staff. Yes, Wang Xiao. Several security guards carried Zhang Xuqing out, and Wang Minjun was also escorted out. With the matter resolved, everyone's gaze turned to Lin Dong with curiosity. Befriending two big shots in whose city, his status was somewhat intimidating. Yao Shui's heart leaped with joy when she saw Lin Dong. She thought she might never see him again in her life. She hadn't expected to see him the day after they parted. In fact, she had some expectations when she first came. Today, while everyone is here, let me say this, Lin Dong is my brother, and his cousin is my cousin. In the future, anyone who dares to bully her in whose city, don't blame me, Wang Chang, for not showing mercy, Wang Chang declared loudly to the onlookers. And me. Yi Hong added. Thank you, both of you. Lin Dong said. 
No need to mention Yi Hong, who was already in his thirties. Wang Chang was at least twenty-six or twenty-seven Lin Dong felt it wasn't a loss to call them both brothers. No need to be polite, mister. Lin. All right, everyone, let's disperse. The crowd gradually dispersed. Yao Shui walked up to Lin Dong and said, Mr. Lin, we meet again. Miss Yao, hello? Wang Li had recovered by now. She looked at Lin Dong and then at Yao Shui, asking, Brother, do you know Sister Yao Shui? Yes. I know her. Sister Yao Shui, thank you for helping me just now, and also thank you, Sister Qingxiu. Wang Li expressed her gratitude. Li Qingxiu had been about to leave, but upon hearing Wang Li's call, she walked back over. Don't mention it, little sister. Thank you both. Lin Dong also expressed his thanks. Mr. Lin, you're too polite. Both stars replied simultaneously. Jiang Cheng. Jiang Nan International Mansion. Zhao Xian drove a Porsche 911 into the gate. She didn't notice a taxi following behind. Besides the driver, there were a young man and a young woman sitting in the taxi, sir. Where is this place? The young man asked. Young man, this is the rich area of Jiangcheng. I can't enter, so this is where we part. 50 yuan altogether, the driver replied. So expensive, the young man asked. Young man, I've been waiting for over half an hour. Time isn't free, you know? All right then. Thank you, sir. The two paid and got off the car. They arrived at the gate of Jiangnan International Mansion. As they approached, they were stopped by security guards. Hey! What are you two doing here? Hurry up and leave, this isn't where you should be, the guard said. Big brother, I just want to ask, whose red Porsche just went in, the young man asked. Whose? Of course, it's the owner's. Is it yours? Hurry up and get lost. Big brother, the house prices here are quite high, right? Young man, are you from a remote mountainous area? Let me tell you, the price here starts at 20,000 per square meter, and a house starts at 50 million do you think that's expensive? Ah! So expensive? Is it possible that someone is renting here? Are you out of your mind? You bought a house for 50 million and rent it to others? Besides, anyone who can afford the rent here wouldn't care about such a small rent. Get lost! Okay! Okay. I'm leaving, thank you, big brother. The young man and woman left. They found a cheap hotel to stay in. After entering the room, the woman spoke up. Jiayang, can't we just go find your sister directly? The young man was Zhao Xian's brother, Zhao Yang, and the woman was his girlfriend, Feng Miao. However, their relationship was opposed by Feng Miao's family because Feng Miao's family was from the town. While Zhao Yang's family was from the countryside, the two had secretly run away to seek refuge with Zhao Yang's sister, Zhao Xian. But when they arrived, Zhao Yang found that his sister Zhao Xian had lied to their family. Zhao Xian had said that it was difficult to make money in the city, having to rent a house and live. But what Zhao Yang saw after coming here was Zhao Xian driving luxury cars and living in luxury mansions. No. Let's wait for my parents to come. I've always been afraid of my sister since I was a child. Only my parents can stand up to her. Let me call my mom first. Zhao Yang took out his phone and started dialing. Brat, where did you go? Hurry back. A middle-aged woman's angry voice came from the phone. Mom, I'm already in Jiangcheng, I'm not going back, the young man said. You little brat, you've abducted someone else's daughter, and they've come looking for her. Hurry back. Mom, listen to me. I've found my sister. She's rich now, driving cars worth millions and living in houses worth tens of millions. Come and see for yourself. Are you crazy about money, you little brat? Mom, I'm not lying to you. Yesterday, I went to my sister's workplace, and I saw her driving a red sports car worth millions when she got off work. And then, the voice asked on the phone. Then I couldn't catch up. Today, I took a taxi and waited at the gate. I saw my sister enter a community. I asked the security guard. The house prices there start at 20,000 per square meter, and in our town, you can buy a house with that money. Each house there costs at least 50 million. You brat, are you not lying to me? You didn't mistake someone else for your sister, did you? 
Why would I lie to you? Do I not know? My own sister? All right, then. Your father and I will come over tomorrow morning. That little girl, she only sends 2,000 yuan back each month. She drives luxury cars and lives in luxury houses in the big city. Meow meow, you should also call your parents and invite them to come tomorrow together. After Zhao Yang finished his call with his mother, he turned to Feng Miao and spoke. What should they come for? To take me back? They never agreed to us being together in the first place. You're being naive. Your parents disagreeing with us being together is because your family is from the town, while ours is from the countryside. They might not have the wealth your family does, but once they see how prosperous my sister is now, they definitely won't object anymore. Then we can openly be together. Feng Miao pondered for a moment and realized Zhao Yang was right. So she made a call to her parents. Her mother directly scolded the two of them, but they would definitely come tomorrow. Zhao Yang lay on the bed holding Feng Miao and said, Miao Miao, we won't go back in the future, we'll stay in Jiangqing let my sister buy me luxury cars and mansions. Then we can drive around in luxury cars every day. But will your sister buy them for you? Feng Miao was somewhat skeptical. I'll ask her. She definitely won't refuse my parents' request. Didn't you see how I directly asked my parents to come over? Don't worry. My parents always favor me. Since childhood, I've had everything good, I'm the only child in our family. In their eyes, my sister exists to serve me. All right. I also want the kind of car your sister drives. It's so beautiful. I dream about it. Okay. I'll buy you one when the time comes. Each of us will have one. The two envisioned their future wonderful life and gradually fell asleep. In Hu City. At the Hu XIN Club. The charity auction for tonight has already begun. All the attendees are seated in the lobby on the first floor. The host on stage is Rao Xiaoqing, the leading actress of the Hu West Province TV station respected guests. Good evening everyone. Welcome to the third annual charity auction hosted by Hu City. Today is a day to gather love, feel care, and embrace warmth and harmony. It is also a day to showcase the love and dedication of people from all walks of life. After the host finished reciting her lines, a video started playing on the big screen. The video depicted the difficulty students face in some remote mountainous areas, where some have to walk two or three hours on mountain roads just to reach school. Every day, they spend five or six hours commuting to and from school. Moreover, the school conditions are very poor, with desks and chairs donated by students' families, very dilapidated. Many students' parents have gone out to work for a living, leaving only elderly grandparents and young children at home. At such a young age, these children have become the backbone of their families, skilled in household chores like laundry and cooking they yearn for education and desire to see the world outside the mountains. After the video ended, Rao Xiaoqing continued, Tonight, all proceeds from the auction will be donated to the children in the video, providing them with new schools, desks, chairs, backpacks, and clothes. Next, let's auction off the first item of love. The first auction item is a song, a new song by the diva Cold Autumn. Bidding starts. No reserve price, bids can be made freely. 100,000. 150,000. 300,000. 500,000. All right, guess no. 17 bids 500,000. Any higher bids? Lin Dong looked at his sign, no. 7. He casually raised it and said, I bid 5 million. Once 5 million was announced, many people turned their heads to Lin Dong's direction, curious to see who this big spender was. 5 million. Guess no 7 bids 5 million. Any higher bids? 3, 2, 1, sold. Please welcome Cold Autumn to the stage to perform her new song. Cold Autumn went on stage. She hadn't expected her song to fetch such a staggering price of 5 million, even though she wouldn't get a penny of it, as it would all be donated but she was still happy because any contribution to the children in the video was good. After Cold Autumn finished singing, the second auction item was a painting by a master. In the end, the painting was bought for 800,000, though its actual value was at most 100,000. Because everyone was there to donate, the hefty premium was understandable. One by one, the auction items were bought, and Lin Dong didn't bid again. When it came to Yashua's turn, she auctioned off a dance. Also bought by Lin Dong, 4-5 million. 
Lin Dong's character was such that he repaid kindness with generosity. Since they had helped their cousin Wang Li tonight, they had to show respect to the other party soon. The auction was nearing its end. When the last charity item was sold, the entire banquet was about to end. At this point, Lin Dong raised his sign to speak. The host was about to read the closing remarks, but saw Lin Dong raising his sign to donate a song. Lin Dong had spent 10 million today, so this little favor should be granted. Rao Xiaoqing invited Lin Dong on stage. Mr. Lin wants to donate a song. Does anyone want to bid? Can I buy it back myself? Lin Dong asked. Buy it back yourself? Yes. Well, since Mr. Lin wants to buy the song back himself, let's just listen to him sing it. Mr. Lin, how much are you willing to bid to buy back your song? One billion. How much? Rao Xiaoqing stuttered. I bid one billion to buy back my song. This statement not only shocked Rao Xiaoqing on stage but also amazed the hundreds of guests below. Except for Yi Hong and Wang Chang, everyone else was extremely shocked one billion to buy back your own song? Isn't that the same as donating one billion directly? Lin Dong seems to have never appeared in Hu City before. Not only does he have a good relationship with young master Wang and young master Yi, he also directly donates over a billion. Simply boundlessly generous. Lin Dong walked to the piano in front. Tonight, I bring forth a song called Snail, hoping that the children in the video can one day have their own sky. Lin Dong finished speaking and began his song. The slow melody emanated from the piano. Whether or not to put down the heavy shell. Searching for where the blue sky lies. Drifting gently with the breeze. Unfelt are the wounds experienced. I will climb step by step upwards. Waiting for the sunlight to gaze upon its face quietly. The small sky harbors big dreams. The heavy shell envelopes gentle aspirations. I will climb step by step upwards. Flying forward on leaves at the highest point the tears and sweat shed in the small sky. Someday, I will have my own sky. A reminder once again, this is a parallel world. Parallel world. Parallel world. Important matters must be reiterated three times. The song Snail concluded. Thunderous applause erupted from the audience below. The children in the video, like the snails in Lin Dong's song, aspire to venture out of the mountains and find a sky of their own. Mr. Lin, is this song your own creation? asked an audience member below. Yes. Lin Dong replied. Mr. Lin, you're so talented, so handsome. Yao Shua looked at Lin Dong on stage, her eyes full of affection, he was the man she admired. Cold Autumn also looked at Lin Dong with equal amazement, this man was indeed extraordinary. Early the next morning, Lin Dong sent Wang Li back to school, transferred one billion into her account, letting her spend it freely, and asked her to subtly hint to her aunt and uncle about it then he drove back to Jiangcheng in his Bugatti Veyron. Hu City was nearly a thousand kilometers from Jiangcheng, but Lin Dong drove directly back. A good car was indeed a good car, with a slightly higher price for a reason. Its performance was top-notch in all aspects, combined with Lin Dong's proficient driving skills, the Bugatti Veyron sped along the overtaking lane. Lin Dong drove on the road back to Jiangcheng. After the events of the past two days, he had many thoughts. From his cousin's danger in the luxurious hotel to being bullied at the charity banquet, all were smoothed over by Wang Chang. Although he had endless money, he had nothing else to offer except money. Relying solely on others to solve problems was not a long-term solution. If Yi Hong and Wang Chang knew he had no background, would they eye his wealth? Most likely so, he must first enhance his strength and establish his own power. With unlimited financial support, establishing power was easy, but the challenge lay in finding individuals absolutely loyal to him. This would take time to find, but power must be established as soon as possible. Then there was the matter of improving his own strength. Glancing at the dashboard, the godly rich point remained at 200, meaning that the 1 billion donated last night and the 1 billion transferred to his cousin Wang Li's account today did not increase his godly rich points. So, giving away money didn't increase godly rich points, did he need to buy something? But when he donated 110 billion to SCC, his godly rich points increased. After donating to SCC, he also obtained the status of a senior member. So, donating money was indeed effective but he needed to receive something in return. 
both physique and mental power were at 50 points, rated as strong since his physique had increased from 18 points to 50, although he hadn't tested it, Lin Dong felt his body should be no worse than those who exercised regularly. Then, would increasing his physique to 100, 200, 500, or even 1000 points make him like Superman? This required further exploration. Improving mental power would sharpen his senses and clear his mind, something he must do. Lastly, there were the skills. He now possessed five skills, car driving, composing, lyricism, singing, and piano, all rated at 10 points, classified as mastery. Since the skills could be increased at will, could he add the dragon subduing 18 poems? Should he give it a try? So, Lin Dong stopped the car at a service area and tried to add the dragon subduing 18 poems. If successful, that would be awesome. He was excited, he wanted to become the world's number one martial artist. He filled in dragon subduing 18 palms in the skills panel panel display, scanning in progress. Ha! Huh? Hadn't such a situation occurred when increasing skills before? At this moment, a voice sounded in Lin Dong's mind. Through system detection, the skill dragon subduing 18 palms does not exist in the host's world. Increase failed, deducting 10 godly rich points. Damn! He knew it wouldn't work. Just as he thought. Lin Dong helplessly accepted reality. As Lin Dong prepared to continue his journey, he suddenly felt his car move forward slightly. Lin Dong was stunned. Damn, was he rear-ended? He quickly opened the car door and got out to check. Sure enough, a Bama sedan was pressed against the rear of his Bugatti Veyron. Lin Dong looked around, he had indeed parked at the service area, so the responsibility should lie with the other party, right? Too unlucky, not only did he lose 10 godly rich points, but his newly bought Bugatti was also rear-ended. Approaching for a closer look, fortunately, it wasn't very serious, which relieved him a bit hey. How did you park? Don't you know this is a road? A woman in her 30s got out of the car and shouted at Lin Dong. Miss, I parked inside the service area, you rear-ended me, so you should be fully responsible. Lin Dong said to the woman. I'm responsible? Clearly, you parked recklessly, so you should be fully responsible. Don't think you're all that just because you drive a sports car. It might be rented or borrowed. Look at what you've done to my precious baby. I'm telling you, you're not leaving until you compensate me today. Initially, Lin Dong thought it wasn't a big deal and was prepared to let it go, even if he didn't need that money. He didn't expect to encounter such an arrogant person fine, he couldn't be bothered to argue with her, let the police handle it. The resonant voice of the lady attracted numerous onlookers. It was during the May Day holiday period, with many cars on the road. Upon seeing the Bugatti Veyron supercar rear-ended, many people parked their cars at the service area and came to observe. My, is this the Bugatti Veyron? This is a car starting at 30 million. Even a minor paint touch-up would cost tens of thousands, right? So expensive? Then the rear-ender should bear full responsibility. She probably can't even afford to sell her precious code. Alas, luxury cars can't afford to be damaged. It's better to keep a distance in the future when seeing one. Hey, hey, hey! What are you guys talking about? Are you all just idle with full bellies? Upon hearing this, Lin Dong realized the woman was venting her frustration aimlessly. Soon, the traffic police arrived at the scene. After on-site investigation and viewing the service area footage, it was determined that the code-bearing car was fully responsible for the rear-end collision now the woman in the code-bearing car fell silent. Miss, since it's determined that you're fully responsible, let me explain to you, my car is a limited-edition Bugatti Veyron, with only 8 units worldwide. The official price is 60 million, and now it's already inflated to 80 million. Just for this minor damage to the rear, I estimate it'll cost at least a million to repair. How do you intend to compensate? As Lin Dong spoke, the surrounding bystanders gasped in astonishment. 80 million? Even a minor scratch costs a million to repair. It truly shattered their worldview. What? A million to start with? Impossible. Are you trying to cheat me? Cheat you? Check it yourself on your phone, see if I'm trying to cheat you. The woman in the code-bearing car searched on her phone and became unsettled seeing the prices. I don't have money. I may not have money, but I value my life. She's starting to play stubborn again she's truly something. Miss, if you don't have money, I'll apply for enforcement. 
By then, your house and car will be auctioned off, and you'll be detained for 10 days or half a month. How does that sound to you? The woman in the code-bearing car was too frightened to speak. Her face alternated between pale and flushed. The people around felt a sense of justice served. Brother, brother, please don't arrest my mommy. Please, I apologize to you on behalf of my mommy, and when I grow up, I'll earn money to compensate you, okay? Upon seeing this, Lin Dong noticed a five- or six-year-old girl clutching his pant leg. Little one. Is she your mommy? Lin Dong pointed to the woman in the code-bearing car. Yes. Does she treat you well? Yes. Has she ever hit you? Mom only hits when I'm naughty. When I'm good, she doesn't hit me. Your mommy owes me a lot of money, are you scared? I'm not scared. I'll study hard, work when I grow up, save money, and then compensate you, brother do you have money with you? Yes. The little girl took out a 10 yuan bill from her pocket and handed it to Lin Dong, saying, this is all I have. Lin Dong took the 10 yuan, stood up, and walked towards his car, saying as he left, people in their 20s are really acting like dogs. Opening the car door, igniting the engine, he vanished from the sight of the crowd. Damn, he's letting go of over a million? The world of the wealthy is truly incomprehensible. Let's go, let's go back quickly and have a daughter, hitting a luxury car won't require compensation. In Jiangcheng, Zhao Xian drove his Porsche 911 back to Jiangnan International Mansion after work. Just as he arrived at the gate of Jiangnan International Mansion, he was stopped by someone. Zhao Xian took a closer look. Isn't this his parents and younger brother Zhao Yan? Who are the other three people? How did they end up here? Zhao Xian quickly got out of the car mom, Dad, Zhao Yang, what are you doing here? Humph. If we didn't come, how would we know that you're driving luxury cars and living in luxury mansions in the big city, while we toil away at home? Zhao Xian's mother, Li Chunying, said. Mom, it's not what you think, this car belongs to my boss. Zhao Xian explained. Your boss? Do you drive your boss's car every day? Why doesn't he let others drive it? Mom, can we talk somewhere else? Do you have a place to stay? Let me take you to a hotel and book two rooms. I'm not going anywhere. I want to stay here, don't think I don't know, your brother has been observing you for days, you've been staying here every day. Li Chunying pointed to Zheng Nan International Mansion. Mom, this house belongs to my boss, I can't take you inside. Nonsense. What boss? I think it's your boyfriend. Otherwise, which boss would let you drive his car and live in his house? You've forgotten your family as soon as you got a boyfriend. Do you believe I'll discipline you right now? Zhao Xian's father, Zhao Taizhu, said as he picked up a wooden stick and struck Zhao Xin. Zhao Xin didn't expect her father to suddenly hit her. She was hit on the arm, and tears welled up in her eyes from the pain. She felt wronged. Over the years, she had scrimped and saved for the family. She paid for her brother's college tuition and living expenses. She still sent 20,000 back home every month. She had basically given all her earnings to her family. And now, she was being hit and scolded. But what could she do? They were her parents and her younger brother. In the end, she had no choice but to bring them, a party of six, into the international mansion. Zhao Xian thought since it was the May Day holiday, Lin Dong should have gone home and wouldn't be back for a while. Entering the room, everyone was stunned. They had never seen such a luxurious house even on TV, yet here it was, right in front of them the Feng Miao family was also speechless with shock. They had thought their conditions were decent. They had looked down on Zhao Yang's family for being rural. But now, they realized they were just frogs at the bottom of a well. Looking at Zhao Yang, they no longer felt disgusted, and even started to like him more. With a sister like this, how bad could his future be? Sister, your place is too luxurious, isn't it? This decoration, this view, it's even more luxurious than what's on TV. Zhao Yang walked to the huge floor-to-ceiling window and said, He's thinking about how it would feel to live here every day in the future? This place is so spacious, and he and Feng Miao can easily live here together. When everyone came to their senses, they were a bit reserved at first, but when they realized this was their daughter Zhao Xian's home, it was like their own home, right? At this moment, Zhao Xian said, Dad, Mom, what brings you here? Speak. Zhao Taizhu pointed to Feng Miao and her parents and said, She's Feng Miao, 
your brother's girlfriend they are Feng Yao's parents. Both of our families are discussing helping your brother with his marriage. You just need to come up with 5 million to buy them a house and a car. Zhao Xian was so angry that she almost laughed. As soon as her lifelong farmer father opened his mouth, it was 5 million? Did he even know how much 5 million was? It must have been Zhao Yang's idea. I don't have that much money. Zhao Xian said. Then how much are you prepared to offer? Zhao Taizhu asked. Even he felt that suggesting 5 million was too much, it was all Zhao Yang's idea. I won't offer a single cent. What? Are you asking to get beaten again? Zhao Taizhu shouted loudly, even if you beat me to death, I won't give you a single cent. You, you little brat, are you trying to infuriate me? Let me tell you, you must offer this money. Zhao Taizhu pointed at Zhao Xian and scolded her. Zhao Xian, too, cried out in anger, since childhood, you've always favored him. Just because he's a son, whatever delicacies there were, you gave them to him. The money for my college tuition, did you contribute a single cent? When he needed to go to college and there was no money at home, fine, I went to borrow. Then I scrimped and saved to pay it back slowly. Do you know how I lived during that time? I fainted at work due to malnutrition. Later, when my job got better, every month, I sent back almost all of my earnings except for a bit of living expenses. What more do you want? And you, you little brat, you've squandered all the opportunities for college education. You have no gratitude whatsoever now you're demanding 5 million as soon as you open your mouth. What do you take me for? An ATM? Let me make it clear to you now, from today onwards, I won't give you a single cent. Zhao Xian had been holding this in for too long. Just because she was a daughter, she had never been recognized by her family since childhood. No matter how well she performed, it was useless. Even though she was always top of her class in every exam, she never received the slightest recognition from her parents. And no matter how mischievous Zhao Yang was, they would always side with him. As long as Zhao Yang complained, she would definitely get a beating. Later, when she got into college, she almost dropped out because the family refused to pay. They would say, why does a daughter need so much education? You'll get married sooner or later, so it's better to go out and work early to earn money to support the family. Fortunately, her teacher supported her at that time, and she managed to finish her studies by working part-time now, they were directly coming to demand 5 million for her brother's marriage. Where was she supposed to get 5 million? Although she had been promoted, Lin Dong hadn't even mentioned a salary increase for her yet. Zhao Xian's outburst also stunned everyone present. Especially Li Chunhua and Zhao Taizhu. They had always seen their children as very obedient. They never expected them to suddenly dare to defy them like this. This caught them off guard for a moment. Anyway. If you don't give us the money, we'll just stay here and not leave. Li Chunhua said stubbornly. Since that's the case, let me tell you honestly. This house was given to me by my boss out of pity for my situation. Do you know how much this house is worth? After Zhao Xian asked a question, she continued, 4 billion. 4 billion? My God. They couldn't comprehend how much 4 billion was worth. It could probably buy up an entire street in their town when Zhao Yang said that his sister's house was worth 50 million at least, they didn't believe it at all. How could there be such an expensive house? But now, they realized that 50 million was an understatement. Do you know how much 4 billion is? With that money, you could buy a whole set of houses in their hometown. If you don't leave, I will. When the security guards catch you for breaking in, don't blame me. Breaking into such an upscale community would get you at least 10 or 8 years in jail. After Zhao Xian finished speaking, she stood up to leave. Stop. You brat, do you want to rebel? Zhao Taizhu stood up and wanted to go over to hit Zhao Xian, but was stopped by Li Chunhua. Dad. You've always treated me like a brat. Even beggars outside are treated better than me. I'm your daughter. Zhao Xian said tearfully. Zhao Yan was also shocked. Originally, he thought that as long as he brought his parents here, Zhao Xian would give him whatever he wanted because that had always been the case before but now, things were developing unexpectedly. Sister, we. Don't say anything. I know what you're thinking. You thought that by bringing mom and dad here, you could eat and live comfortably with me. How old are you this year? Can't you earn money to get married yourself? 
Zhao Xian no longer paid attention to them and went straight out. The people in the room also immediately stood up and followed Zhao Xian. After all, they came from a small place. If they were caught and sentenced to 10 or 8 years in jail for breaking and entering into such an upscale community, where could they argue? When Zhao Xian reached the entrance, the door suddenly opened from the outside. When Lin Dong arrived in Jiangcheng, it was already dark. If it weren't for a delay on the road, he should have arrived earlier. Dragging his tired body back to Jiangnan International Mansion, he opened the door Lin Dong saw Zhao Xian with slightly red eyes, about to leave. Hmm. Xuanjie, what's wrong? Are you going out? Then he noticed the few people behind Zhao Xian. Who are they? When Zhao Xian saw Lin Dong, her heart tightened. Didn't Lin Dong go home for the May Day holiday? Why did he come back so soon? And why now, of all times? Mr. Lin, I'm sorry. They are my family. They came from our hometown to see me, so I brought them here to rest for a while. I'll take them away soon. Zhao Xian said nervously. She was afraid that Lin Dong would be unhappy. This was a house worth four billion. It must be uncomfortable for him to have random people coming in while he was away. Where do you intend to go at this late hour? Lin Dong inquired. There are plenty of rooms here, isn't that so? There's certainly no shortage of space. In truth, Zhao Xian was overly concerned. After all, a house is meant for people to reside in, Lin Dong remarked, there are several rooms downstairs, more than enough for them to stay comfortably. Lin Dong saw no issue with it. No, no need. I've arranged accommodation for them outside, Lin Dong began, but was abruptly interrupted by Zhao Taizhu. Are you the boyfriend of this little troublemaker? Since you are already cohabiting, it's time to formalize things. You may be a big shot, and we may be of humble origin, but the necessary formalities cannot be neglected. Our demands are not excessive. Prepare a dowry of 10 million, buy your brother-in-law a flat and a car in Jiangcheng. They needn't be extravagant. Since you can afford such an expensive house, these requests shouldn't be unreasonable, Zhao Taizhu insisted. Lin Dong was taken aback. Troublemaker? Was he referring to Zhao Xian? What kind of father addresses his own daughter in such a manner? He's practically assuming I am Zhao Xian's boyfriend. But considering my living arrangement with Zhao Xian, to outsiders, it does seem like cohabitation this situation could be difficult to explain away. But this demand for a 10 million dowry, a flat, and a car in Jiangcheng. Is he selling his daughter off? Lin Dong remained silent, glancing at Zhao Xian. Zhao Xian's chest heaved, her eyes wide with fear as tears streamed down her face. She shouted, Dad! How can you say such things? How am I wrong? You're already living together. Don't you understand the implications? If he doesn't marry you, how will you ever marry? How can we hold our heads up in front of the villagers? Zhao Taizhu retorted. Lin Dong couldn't hold back. Uncle, I'm just Xian's employer, not her boyfriend. Employer? Do employers live with their subordinates? Are you trying to shirk responsibility? Zhao Taizhu questioned Lin Dong was speechless. This situation was indeed troublesome, and explanations seemed futile. He fell silent. Dad, please, stop it. Are you really going to force me to death? Zhao Xian cried out loudly, her voice trembling. Sis, Dad's just helping you. Zhao Yang chimed in. Lin Dong was perplexed. He's pleased now. Since dad mentioned having Xian and her husband buy a flat and a car in Jiangcheng, it's a done deal. And with the 10 million dowry, he'll certainly benefit. He'll be a man with a car, a house, and savings. Why would he still work? He could spend his days driving around enjoying life. The Feng family was also excited. If they followed Zhao Tiezhu's plan, they'd wholeheartedly support this marriage. 10 million plus a flat and a car in Jiangcheng would certainly boost their status. Zhao Xian glanced at her parents and brother, feeling not a shred of guilt despite her anguish and desperate plea for escape they were here for money. If Lin Dong were a pauper, they'd surely find a way to break them up. But seeing Lin Dong's wealth, they treated her like a commodity, ready to extort him. All they saw was money. With or without her, it didn't seem to matter to them. In that moment, Zhao Xian realized. She had been nothing but a tool to this family from the very beginning. 
She cursed her naivety in the past, sending money home, believing it was her anchor. Now, she understood she was merely a passing insect, rootless and adrift. Her heart grew cold. She turned and walked into the elevator. All she wanted now was to escape this place. Sensing something amiss, Lin Dong hurriedly followed, squeezing into the closing elevator doors at the last moment. The remaining Zhao family members exchanged uncertain glances, unsure of what to do in the end, they decided to leave. After all, they were in someone else's home, and Zhao Xin's distress had genuinely frightened them, fearing they might be mistaken for thieves and apprehended. In a park in Jiangcheng, by the river, Lin Dong and Zhao Xian sat in silence. Zhao Xian recounted her 20 plus years of experiences, while Lin Dong listened attentively, offering no words. Lin Dong, am I foolish? Whatever they ask for, I give, even if it means borrowing or saving painstakingly, Zhao Xian asked after finishing her story. Sister Xian, you're not foolish. You're simply too compassionate. The more you give, the more they expect. Lin Dong pondered for a moment before replying. Perhaps. But I've made a decision. I've lived for them for the past 20 years, but for the next few decades, I want to live for myself. Sister Xian, why don't we invite your parents for dinner tomorrow? They've come all this way it's the least we can do. And if you need money, just go to the finance department. Whatever decision you make, I'll support you, Lin Dong said. Thank you, Lin Dong. Zhao Xian leaned against Lin Dong, tears streaming down her face. She had expected Lin Dong to look down on her because of her family, but he had shown no disdain. Little did she know, Lin Dong had lost his parents at a young age, and life with his third uncle was hardly better than hers. But he still had his caring aunt and cousin. He sympathized with Zhao Xian's plight. She had always put her family first, only to realize they saw her as a mere source of income. Sister Xian, cry as much as you need. Let it all out, Lin Dong gently patted Zhao Xian's back. And so, Zhao Xian wept in Lin Dong's embrace for about half an hour before standing up seeing Lin Dong's shirt soaked with her tears, she felt embarrassed. Lin Dong, I'm sorry for wetting your clothes. It's all right, Sister Xian. Let's go back, Lin Dong said, offering his hand. The two returned to Jiangnan International Mansion and found Zhao Yang and the others had left. Lin Dong, I'll go find them. Zhao Xian exclaimed, ready to leave but Lin Dong held her back. Xian, didn't you say you want to live for yourself from now on? You should learn to say no. If you go looking for them now, it'll only embolden them further. Besides, they're adults, nothing will happen to them. All right then. Good night, Lin Dong. Zhao Xian said before retreating to her room. She felt Lin Dong's advice was sound, if she wanted to live for herself, she must learn to refuse. Lin Dong lay on his bed, contemplating the system panel before him. Host, Lin Dong Balance, 999996865462546546 Physique, 100, Limit, Plus Spirit, 100, Limit, Plus Skills, Car Driving, Master 10, Plus, Piano Technique, Master 10, Plus, Singing, Master 10, Plus, Lyricism, Master 10, Plus, Composition, Master 10, Plus Tycoon Points, 90 Physique and Spirit had reached 100 points, seemingly at their limit as the plus signs disappeared. Could there be no further improvement? It couldn't be. Was it so quick to reach a limit? What use were the remaining tycoon points? Increased skills? Even dragon subduing 18 palms couldn't be enhanced. Forget it, he'd figure it out later. He had a feeling the system wasn't that simple. Lindong got up, feeling sticky. He headed to the pool. Xian should be asleep now. Can't worry about that. Just strip and jump in, he thought. The water felt refreshing as he swam a few laps, cleaning himself. Emerging, he observed his body. No significant changes, but he felt explosively powerful, as if he could punch a cow to death. The next morning, in the chairman's office of Golden Leaf Hotel Shen, I'm planning to establish an investment company named Donglai International. But I lack the time, so I need a trustworthy person to help me set up the team. I hope you can assist me. Lin Dong, I'm afraid I won't do it well, Zhao Xian hesitated. She wanted to, but feared her capabilities and didn't want to delay Lin Dong's affairs. Xian, you're capable. Don't confine yourself to this small hotel, you should explore the outside world. Then I'll give it a try. Go ahead boldly. The greatest support I can offer is unlimited financial resources. Whoever you think is suitable, we'll hire them. 
Even if others offer a million, we'll offer five. As long as they're talented, we won't hesitate to spend. Okay, I'll leave tomorrow then. All right, call uncle and aunt over. Let's have dinner together. After last night's events, Lin Dong felt Zhao Xin had changed. He used to enjoy her optimism, occasionally finding her teasing charming but circumstances had altered her. He still preferred the old Zhao Xian, but understood that people change after experiencing certain things. On the other hand, at an ordinary hotel where Zhao Taizhu and his family stayed. In the morning, they gathered, awaiting Zhao Taizhu's decision. Dad, what should we do today? Zhao Yang asked. What to do? We'll go to her hotel and find her. But if sis refuses to see us? Refuse? I've raised her all these years, and now she's living well, thinking she can ignore her old man? I'll cause a scene at her workplace, embarrass her in front of her colleagues. Right, let's do that. This brat thinks she can disregard us now that she's grown wings. Li Chunhua chimed in. The Feng family remained silent but hoped Zhao Yang could get Zhao Xian's help, after all, it concerned their daughter's future happiness. As they prepared to go to Zhao Xin's workplace, Zhao Xin called, inviting them to the hotel for a meal dad. Looks like sis has compromised. Our house and car are settled. Zhao Yang exclaimed happily. Feng Yao was also pleased, Zhao Yang's fortune was hers too. Zhao Taizhu at this moment also revealed a smile, saying, look at your lack of ambition. Your brother-in-law is a big boss, living in a mansion worth billions. He surely can't manage such a large hotel on his own. Didn't you say your sister is a manager? Let her arrange a managerial position for you. Yes, my sister is the general manager. Besides her husband, she's the top authority. Let him arrange a job for me, and let Nyamia go too. Having your sister arrange a managerial position for you and a financial role for Nyamia would prevent your brother-in-law from squandering money outside. You two can also assist your sister a bit, said Li Chunhua. The group proceeded joyfully to the Golden Leaf Hotel. Upon arrival, under the guidance of the waitstaff, they reached the first private room Lindong and Zhao Xian were already seated inside, and the dishes were already served. Looking at the table full of delicacies, everyone couldn't help but salivate. Only an emperor on television can enjoy such exquisite dishes. I never thought I would have a chance to taste them too. Uncle and aunt, since you've come from afar, today I'll play the role of the host. Let's eat freely, and if it's not enough, we can ask the kitchen to prepare more, said Lin Dong. Thank you, brother-in-law. Zhao Yang sat down and started eating, with the others following suit. This lobster is delicious, meow meow, try some. Dad, Mom, have some of this lobster too. Why is this crab so big? Mom, this is king crab, very expensive, one costs several thousand. What's this? It's so dark and melts in the mouth, incredibly tasty. That's caviar. Even more expensive. This is abalone. I don't recognize this one. This one's even tastier. As they were enjoying their meal, Lin Dong stood up and said, Uncle and aunt, please enjoy your meal, I have some matters to attend to if it's not enough, let Xin inform the kitchen to prepare more. Brother-in-law. You can go ahead with your work, Zhao Yang replied with a mouthful of food. After Lin Dong left, it was a while before Zhao Xian spoke. After you finish eating, pack up and go back. I'll send money back on time every month. Sis, I don't want to go back. Just arrange a job for me here, Zhao Yang said. Zhao Xian thought for a moment. If Zhao Yang could work well here, it would be a good thing. She said, then give me your university graduation certificate, I'll see which position suits you. Zhao Yang suddenly fell silent, and the scene became quiet. Zhao Xian stared at Zhao Yang. Zhao Yang felt somewhat uneasy. Although he had been afraid of Zhao Xian before, it wasn't like today Zhao Xian's gaze made him feel chills. Finally, he had no choice but to say, actually, sis, I didn't go to university. Oh? Didn't go to university? Then what about the money I scrimped and saved to send you there? Zhao Xian asked, taking a deep breath. At that time, I lost some money gambling and was forced to lie to you that I got into university, Zhao Yang said tremblingly. So you and your family lied to me? I saved and scrimped, even sacrificing my health, causing me to faint at work, and you used that money to pay off gambling debts? Zhao Xian asked angrily. Sis, we had no choice. 
Those debt collectors said if we didn't pay, they would take one of my hands. Dad and mom had no choice but to lie to you. Sis, I know it's all my fault, but I changed. I haven't gambled since then, Zhao Yang explained. I can vouch for that. Yang Yang has indeed changed. Li Chunhua interjected. Zhao Xian took a few deep breaths, trying to calm her anger. Zhao Xian took a few deep breaths, trying to calm herself down. All right then. You'll start from the bottom as a waiter. Sis. I don't want to be a waiter. Please arrange a managerial position for me, and a financial role for Miao Miao. This way, we can prevent brother-in-law from squandering money outside. I promise to report all his actions truthfully to you. Mom said we should support you a bit. Zhao Yang said boldly. Zhao Xian couldn't help but laugh at Zhao Yang's audacity. Managing people? Managing money? And supporting me? Are you trying to sideline Lin Dong? Do you even want this hotel to be surnamed Zhao in the future? It's quite something that they can come up with. Want to manage money? Do you know how much revenue this place generates in a month? Do you know how much this meal cost you? Let me tell you, this meal cost you a million, and this place generates nearly a billion in revenue per month. Do you think you're capable of managing that? As Zhao Xian's words fell, everyone stopped eating they looked up at her with shocked eyes. A meal cost a million? Isn't that too exaggerated? Sis, did you just say how much this meal cost us? Zhao Yang swallowed his food and asked softly. This meal cost you a total of a million. The group fell silent for a long time. After the shock subsided, Li Chunhua spoke, this place makes so much money in a month? Looks like your vision is good. In that case, we don't plan to go back. We've worked hard for half our lives, it's time to enjoy some comfort. Since you're so wealthy, why not buy a house and car for Yang Yang sooner? It'll also help him settle down earlier. That's what aunt and uncle think, Zhao Taizhu added. Zhao Xian looked at this family with speechlessness. They were all cut from the same cloth. She truly felt sad to be born into such a family. Originally, she thought they were family and wanted to help as much as possible. But now, she just wanted to leave as soon as possible, not wanting to see this bunch of people for another moment you guys go ahead and eat. I'll step out for a bit, Zhao Xian said as she got up and left. She was feeling disheartened. Her own family actually conspired to deceive her. The money she had scrimped and saved was actually used by them to pay off gambling debts. Today, she might agree to their requests because of her capabilities, but tomorrow they would ask for more. They would never be satisfied, never know gratitude, only ever demanding. She truly didn't want to see these people again. The group resumed eating, not wanting to waste the extravagant feast worth millions. Zhao Xian headed to the chairman's office. Lin Dong was idly playing with his phone. Oh. Xian, why did you come up so quickly? Lin Dong asked. Director Lin, I just want to leave now. I don't want to see them anymore. Zhao Xian said. Leave now? What about them? Should I give them some money? Lin Dong asked. He felt that Zhao Xian's family must have said something hurtful again to evoke such a strong reaction from her since Zhao Xian had already decided he would support her. No, if you give them anything, it will never end. They will never be satisfied, Zhao Xian replied. So, should I just ignore them? Yes. No need to bother with them. If they cause trouble in the hotel, just report them and have them arrested for a couple of days. They'll behave, Zhao Xian said. All right then. Where does Xi'an plan to go first? To the megalopolis. It's a world-class metropolis, relatively concentrated with talent. Also, I have a college roommate there who might help me, Zhao Xi'an replied. Okay. Then I wish you a smooth journey. When you come back, I'll throw you a celebration banquet. Thank you, Director Lin. Zhao Taizhu and the others were unaware that Zhao Xi'an had already left for the megalopolis. They were too full to move but they couldn't bear to waste the lavish feast worth a million on the table they ended up spending three hours finishing the meal. After they finished, they left the private room and were led to the chairman's office by the staff. Brother-in-law. Where's my sister? Zhao Yang asked. Don't. Don't call me brother-in-law. I've told you, Xian and I are just in a superior subordinate relationship. 
I've never done anything inappropriate, and besides, I'm a college graduate. How could I be your brother-in-law? Lin Dong said. The group exchanged glances, feeling that something was off. It was fine to call in brother-in-law during dinner, but now it wasn't? Mr. Lin, where's my sister? Zhao Yang asked again. Your sister has already left. After you finish eating, you should go home too. Lin Dong replied. She left? Then we'll go find her. When I said she left, I meant she left Jiang City, not just the hotel. Here's Xin's resignation letter, take a look for yourselves. Lin Dong handed Zhao Yang a piece of paper resigned. The group was startled, feeling that something was amiss. Zhao Yang took the letter and indeed, it was a resignation letter written by Zhao Xian. Mr. Lin, why did my sister resign? Well, Xian felt that working here, you would definitely keep bothering her, and she couldn't meet your demands. So, she had to choose to leave, Lin Dong replied. Then where did my sister go? Not sure, it seems she went to seek refuge with a college friend. At this moment, Li Chunhua quickly took out her phone and dialed Zhao Xian's number. Sorry. The number you've dialed is switched off. Sorry. We're done for. Li Chunhua sat down on the floor. Humph. You little brat conspired with that dead girl to deceive us, right? Let me tell you, if she doesn't come out, we'll stay here and not leave. Zhao Taizhu said angrily to Lin Dong. Sir, please don't get angry here. Your daughter left on her own, not because I forced her it's your family that drove her away. What does it have to do with me? If you make a scene here, it'll be your fault. Lin Dong said calmly. I don't care. If she doesn't come out, I'll stay here forever, enjoying the good food and drinks every day, Zhao Taizhu remained unmoved. Sir, when Miss Xian was still here, I treated you all to the best food in the hotel out of respect for her. This table cost a million, but now that she's gone, I don't need to be polite to you anymore. If you cause trouble here, I'll report it directly. By then, you'll be arrested and spend a year or two in jail. It's your fault. Lin Dong said leisurely. Sure enough, after Lin Dong said this, the group was frightened. After all, Lin Dong was a big shot in their eyes. Don't scare me. Let me tell you, I've lived for so many years, I'm not scared by threats. Zhao Taizhu said. Although he said so, the trembling tone revealed his inner unease sir, why would I scare you? I also know a bit about Miss Xian's situation. She said it herself, the gap between you and her is too big. If you two had shown a bit more concern for her, she wouldn't have left like this. When Miss Xian left, she cried a lot, and when she left, she said she had repaid her debt of upbringing over the years. She didn't want to see you anymore. I guess you'll have a hard time finding her for the rest of your life, Lin Dong said. Upon hearing Lin Dong's words, Zhao Taizhu almost fainted on the spot. Li Chunhua hurriedly supported Zhao Taizhu. Zhao Yang's mind also buzzed. All the beautiful fantasies he had envisioned were shattered. Miao Miao's parents pulled her away, preparing to leave. They didn't want to accompany Zhao Taizhu in his madness. What if they really got arrested? Miao Miao. Zhao Yang shouted. Miao Miao turned her head and looked at Zhao Yang pitifully. Why are you still looking at this useless guy? This was such a good opportunity now that Zhao Xian has been forced to leave, everything is ruined. With his abilities, when can he afford a house? A car? Come, let's go back quickly. You're not allowed to associate with him anymore. Mom will introduce you to someone better, Miao Miao's mother said fiercely to Zhao Yang. In an instant, Zhao Yang felt like he had fallen from heaven to hell. And Zhao Taizhu and Li Chunhua were also filled with rage and anger. If Zhao Xian changed her contact information, where would they find her? Moreover, Zhao Xian had been sending money back every month for years. They had developed a habit and hadn't worked for a long time. In the village, their family was the envy of everyone, raising a good daughter who had money to spend without working. What if the source suddenly ceased? Must one revert to the toil of your departing early and returning late? How would the villagers perceive their household? Contemplating this, the elderly couple truly regretted their past actions simply staying at home would be much preferable. Passing the time with card games and leisurely strolls would suffice. All of this is because of Zhao Yang, that near do well. If not for him, they would still be living carefree at home. 
Now, however, they are left with nothing. The elderly couple never truly reflected on their own harshness towards Zhao Xian since childhood, they only lamented not heeding Zhao Yang's advice to stay in their hometown. Of course, their thoughts were justified, if they had remained at home, the monthly remittances from Zhao Xian would never have diminished. Lin Dong sat quietly on the sofa, observing the performance of this family. He could indeed offer money to send Zhao Yang and his family away, even if they made exorbitant demands, Lin Dong could afford it however, Lin Dong did not wish to provide this money. Considering the family background, Lin Dong truly found it miraculous that Zhao Xian had not fallen into decadence, and he admired her greatly. Individuals like Zhao Xian, with both figure and countenance, were absolutely no less appealing than the three goddesses of the Jiang family, they even exuded a mature woman's allure, which was even more enticing to men. Lin Dong had profound experience in this regard. Working in prestigious establishments like the Golden Leaf Hotel allowed her to interact with influential figures, as long as she was truly determined to earn money, it would be remarkably easy. Elders, if you still doubt, you may come to the hotel entrance every morning and see whether Miss Xian comes to work. However, this must not disrupt the hotel's normal operations. Otherwise, do not blame me for withholding courtesy that is all I have to say, you may leave now. The group departed in a daze. Lin Dong did not know whether they would immediately return to their hometown or continue waiting. Nevertheless, it was of no concern to him. Some things are only cherished upon their loss. When they lose Xian Jie's support and experience a period of destitution, perhaps then they will remember her kindness. Lin Dong went to register a company in the afternoon, named East Alliance International Investments Limited, with Zhao Xian as the CEO, and the Golden Leaf Hotel falling under its umbrella. However, it was still a mere framework at present, awaiting Zhao Xian to recruit various talents to expand the company. The next day, when Lin Dong arrived at the Golden Leaf Hotel, he found Zhao Yang's family of three hiding in a corner of the outdoor parking lot. Indeed, they were still not giving up. Lin Dong paid no attention to them and went straight into the hotel. The morning passed by leisurely in the meantime, Lin Dong received a package, a high-level membership badge sent by SCC headquarters. Although referred to as a badge, it was actually a ring engraved with the SCC logo. Just as Lin Dong was preparing to leave, he unexpectedly received a phone call. The call was from Jiang Shan's friend Zhu Yin. She informed Lin Dong that Jiang Shan had suddenly fainted and was now in the hospital. Lin Dong was momentarily stunned by the call. What did Jiang Shan's collapse have to do with me? After all, she has already broken up with me, hasn't she? Shouldn't Huang Junlang be the one to call? Lin Dong was inclined to ignore it. However, as he contemplated, he found it hard to dismiss the matter from his mind. Should I go or not? After all, it held four years worth of memories for me. Even if it's just for my own peace of mind. Driving to the hospital as per Zhu Yan's directions, Lin Dong bought some fruits on the way. Driving a limited edition Bugatti Chiron to buy fruits naturally caused to stir the fruit stall was almost swamped with customers, and the owner was naturally delighted, selling the equivalent of a usual day's worth of fruit in just a short while. Hence, the portion of fruits Lin Dong bought today was particularly ample. Walking down the hospital corridor, Lin Dong suddenly heard two voices coming from a medical room. Doctor, please, can you save my mother? Please. Ah, sir, our hospital is not a charity organization. If you don't have money, how can we treat her? You treat her first, I will definitely find a way to get money. Sir, let me be frank with you. Your mother's condition is very serious. Even if we perform surgery here, the success rate is not high. You should find a hospital with more advanced medical equipment. The chances of success will be higher there. Doctor, how long can my mother live if she doesn't have surgery? Without surgery, she probably has about three months left if the surgery is successful, she could live for another decade without any problem. But if it fails, she might not even live for another three months. Passing by the medical room, Lin Dong casually glanced inside. A man in his thirties was desperately pleading with a doctor in his fifties to save his mother. Lin Dong paid no attention, such incidents occurred daily. After toiling their entire lives, everything could be lost to a single major illness. Entering the ward as mentioned by Zhu Yan, Lin Dong found Zhu Yan sitting by the bedside, Zhang Shan lying pale on the bed, with a doctor conducting an examination. Lin Dong walked in and placed the fruits on a chair. Seeing Lin Dong enter, a flicker of joy flashed across Zhang Shan's pale face. She knew that Zhu Yan had definitely informed Lin Dong. Lin Dong stood still, unmoving. 
After the doctor finished the examination and turned around, he saw Lin Dong behind him. You're the patient's boyfriend, right? You youngsters are really something. The patient has been pregnant for three weeks now, and her body is still so weak. If this continues, it won't be good for the baby's development. If you don't want this child, you'll have to wait until her body recovers before considering surgery. Upon hearing the doctor's words about pregnancy, Lin Dong's mind buzzed, and a tearing pain struck his heart. Four years. A whole four years. How many days and nights had he braved to deliver food to Jiang Shan beneath her dormitory? How many times had he felt elated to receive his wages from part-time jobs because he could buy gifts for Jiang Shan? They had cried together, laughed together. They had envisioned a future together, starting a family with lovely children. Yet, they had never anticipated today's outcome. In the four years together with Jiang Shan, Lin Dong had never gone against her wishes, only to find out that she became pregnant as soon as she got involved with someone else it was truly ironic. Was four years of affection really so cheap? Not even worth as much as a new branded handbag. Lin Dong took a deep breath and said, I understand. Thank you, doctor. Upon hearing the doctor inform Lin Dong of her pregnancy, Jiang Shan's last glimmer of hope shattered. Her already pale face turned even paler. She opened her mouth to say something but found herself unable to produce a sound. Xu Yen had not expected things to turn out like this either. Watching her best friend shed tears every day, she had wanted to help her win Lin Dong back. She knew Lin Dong still loved Jiang Shan. She had witnessed all their sweet moments together. But she hadn't anticipated this scene. The doctor left, leaving the ward in silence. Eventually, Jiang Shan broke the silence and said, Lin Dong, I'm sorry. There's nothing to apologize for everyone has the right to choose. Since you've chosen this path, I'll bless you, replied Lin Dong. Lin Dong, I'm truly sorry. If it weren't for my vanity, accepting Huang Junlang's various gifts and attending his parties, and getting taken advantage of when I drank too much the next day, none of this would have happened, Jiang Shan sobbed. Strangely, Lin Dong felt no ripple in his heart upon hearing Jiang Shan's explanation. He had expected to feel angry and seek revenge against Huang Junlang, but he didn't. Was it really just because he got drunk? Perhaps there were other reasons. After all, his cousin Wang Li had experienced a similar situation a couple of days ago. But if Jiang Shan had been firm in her heart, how could Huang Junlang have had a chance? In the end, it was because their four years of relationship weren't solid enough. Even without Huang Junlang, someone else would have appeared in Jiang Shan's heart. All right. Since you're okay, I'll leave now, said Lin Dong, not wanting to stay any longer Jiang Shan was stunned. Lin Dong's behavior was beyond her expectations. There was no anger towards Huang Junlang. There was no sorrow for herself. All there was, was calmness. Based on her four years of understanding of Lin Dong, he shouldn't be like this. She realized at this moment that she didn't really understand the Lin Dong before her. Lin Dong walked out of the ward, silently saying, Goodbye, Jiang Shan, drawing a period to his four years of affection. From now on, Jiang Shan would become his past completely. The room echoed with Jiang Shan's uncontrollable sobbing. But all of that was no longer relevant to him. Coming out of the hospital, Lin Dong took a few deep breaths. It was all over. When he completely let go at that moment, Lin Dong felt an unprecedented relaxation. Just as he drove out of the hospital gate, a voice rang in Lin Dong's ears. Thief. Catch the thief. Lin Dong quickly pulled over and got out of the car, only to see a young man running towards him with a wallet in his hand, followed by a woman in her thirties get out of here. Get out. Or I'll kill you, the young man shouted while gesturing with the knife in his other hand. Lin Dong was about to test the power of his enhanced physique to its limit. Just as he was about to act, he suddenly felt a shadow pass by him at incredible speed. When Lin Dong looked at the thief, he found that the thief had been pinned down by a hand as strong as iron. The thief struggled on the ground, but he couldn't break free from the vice-like grip. A master. Definitely a master. That was Lin Dong's first impression. With his current mental state reaching its limit, Lin Dong's intuition was extremely sharp. When the person passed by him just now, he could feel the strong aura emanating from him. Upon closer inspection, Lin Dong realized that this was the man who had begged the doctor in the hospital to save his mother Shapuju and walked out of the hospital in anxiety. His mother's illness was very serious and required a lot of money for a chance at treatment. But he didn't have any money. 
For years, he had been working as a mercenary abroad. He had already earned a lot of money and was about to return home to give his family a better life. But just as they were about to finish their last deal, protecting a high-ranking official from a small country during a speech, they were attacked by unidentified assailants, leaving only three out of twelve alive. After returning to the country, the three of them unanimously decided to give all their money to the families of their deceased comrades who would forever remain in a foreign land. Unexpectedly, his mother's illness had come so suddenly. If she didn't undergo surgery soon, she would miss the best treatment window. But where could he get so much money in such a short time? As the ancients said, even a penny can stump a hero, let alone so much money now what should he do? Over the years abroad, his best companions were the two who had returned alive with him. But they were just like him, children from poor families. Otherwise, who would go abroad to risk their lives for money and return with nothing? They must also be struggling for their livelihoods now. Seeking their assistance would surely be futile. Upon exiting the hospital, he heard someone shouting about catching a thief, and instinctively rushed over to apprehend the culprit. With one hand, he pinned the thief to the ground, and despite the thief's struggles, they were in vain. Soon, the woman who had been robbed caught up and took back her stolen wallet from Xiao Pujuan's grasp. Thank you, sir, the woman hastily expressed her gratitude. No trouble at all. Hurry and report it. Xiao Pujuan replied. Yes, yes. The woman took out her phone and dialed the police after a few minutes, the police arrived and took the thief away. The woman continued to express her gratitude profusely to Xiao Pujuan, even attempting to offer him money from her wallet. However, he declined, as apprehending the thief was not motivated by money, even if he were in need, he could not accept it. Just as he was about to leave, a figure blocked his path. He moved left, and the figure blocked him on the left, he moved right, and the figure blocked him on the right. After several repetitions, he realized that this person was intentionally obstructing him. Young man, what is the meaning of this? Xiao Pujuan inquired of the figure, Lin Dong. The sir, shall we find a place to talk? Lin Dong suggested. We are not acquainted, I presume? I can finance the treatment for your mother. However, do not misunderstand, I happened to see you seeking a doctor while visiting a friend at the hospital, Lin Dong explained. Xiao Pujuan carefully observed Lin Dong, intrigued by the faint threat he sensed from him he wondered how this young man achieved such a feat, considering that even in the world of mercenaries abroad, few posed a threat to him. The two found a nearby park. As it was still early, there were not many people in the park. What is your name, sir? Lin Dong asked. I am Xiao Pujuan. Xiao, I understand you urgently need money to save your mother. I can arrange the best hospital, equipment, and medication for auntie. However, regardless of the outcome, you must serve me for ten years. What say you? Lin Dong proposed. Xiao Pujuan looked at Lin Dong. Lin Dong, in turn, stared back, equally defiant. After a moment, Xiao Pujuan agreed, stipulating that he would only ensure Lin Dong's safety and refrain from engaging in unlawful activities. Agreed. Lin Dong extended his hand. Xiao Pujuan reciprocated. Their hands clasped together, forging a legend. Xiao, I'm Lin Dong. You may call me Lin Sha. Lin Sha, don't call me Xiao, just call me Pujuan. Very well, Pijuan, I wish to spar with you. Lin Dong had long desired to test his strength. Since reaching the limits of his physical and mental capabilities, Lin Dong not only heightened his senses but also felt an inexhaustible power within him. Please, Lin Sha. Xiao Pujuan responded. He get too, wished to gauge the abilities of this young man who posed a slight threat to him. The two stood about ten meters apart. Lin Dong lacked any particular technique, he relied solely on his keen senses and explosive physical strength. He endeavored to harness the power within his body, allowing it to suffuse him entirely. At that moment, Lin Dong exuded an aura akin to an ancient Tyrannosaurus. Xiao Pujuan felt an intense pressure, shocked but also emitting his own aura of bloodshed, forged from years on the brink of life and death. Lin Dong pushed off the ground with force, hurtling towards Xiao Pujuan, delivering a punch. Since this was just a sparring match, Lin Dong had engaged his full strength, exerting only 50% as Lin Dong charged, Xiao Pujuan felt a powerful force rushing towards him. Momentarily stunned, he quickly crossed his fists in front of his chest to block the incoming punch. Clang! Xiao Pujuan was sent back several meters by Lin Dong's punch before halting. 
Lin Dong stood where Xiao Pujuan had been, grimacing as he shook his slightly painful right hand. Meanwhile, Xiao Pujuan examined his reddened and swollen arm, his face full of astonishment. Lin Dong's strength far exceeded his expectations. Initially, while Lin Dong had posed a slight threat, Xiao Pujuan hadn't taken him too seriously. After all, Lin Dong seemed so young, appearing to be in his early twenties. For someone of that age, no matter how long they had practiced, how could they compare to someone like Xiao Pujuan, who had spent years on the battlefield? Thus, there was inevitably some underestimation on Xiao Pujuan's part. But now, seeing Lin Dong send him flying back several meters with just one punch, and his arm swelling from the impact, he realized he had indeed underestimated Lin Dong truly, there are talents beyond talents, and heavens beyond heavens. Little did he know that Lin Dong had only used half his strength. If he knew, what would his thoughts be? Pujuan, how was my punch? Lin Dong asked, still feeling the lingering pain in his right hand. Pujuan, you're the first person of your age I've encountered with such prowess. I commend you, Xiao Pujuan praised. The first person of my age? Does that mean you've encountered those stronger than me, just older? Lin Dong felt somewhat dissatisfied with Xiao Pujuan's evaluation. Having reached his own limits, if there were people stronger than him, did that mean he could never surpass them? Even with my current capabilities, there are still stronger individuals out there? Does this mean I can never be unbeatable, even with my cheats activated? It seemed he needed to delve deeper into the system Pujuan, let's go. Let's get Ati transferred to a better hospital and have the surgery done early, so you can accompany me with peace of mind, Lin Dong suggested. Thank you, Lin Sha. Xiao Pujuan exclaimed excitedly. In the Jiangnan Province SCC group, Lin Dong inquired if anyone knew the higher-ups at the first hospital. Soon, someone responded. A person named Lu Chen added Lin Dong as a friend and gave him a phone number to contact the director of the first hospital. Lin Dong made the call, explaining his purpose, and the other party was courteous and enthusiastic. They assured Lin Dong that whenever he decided to transfer, they would promptly arrange for expert consultations in the afternoon. Lin Dong arrived at the first hospital with Xiao Pujuan and his mother, where a team of over 10 experts was already waiting at the entrance. Are you Mr. Lin? Hello, I'm Lu Chuan, the director of the first hospital. Welcome to our hospital. We will do our utmost to save the patient, greeted the director. Thank you, Director Lu, Lin responded respectfully. Mr. Lin, it's our duty, Director Lu replied. Next came a series of examinations by the expert team on Xiao Pujuan's mother. The final conclusion was that surgery must be performed as soon as possible to prevent the condition from worsening. Every additional day would increase the risk. Therefore, the hospital scheduled surgery for Xiao Pujuan's mother the following day. Inside the senior ward of the first hospital. Pujuan, will such a good hospital cost a lot of money? Mom, don't worry. I've already taken care of the money you just focus on getting better. I don't want to get treated anymore. Save this money to marry a wife. You're over 30 now, and you don't even have a wife. Look at the boy next door who grew up with you, his son is almost in junior high. Mom, please get well soon. I'll marry a wife and give you a chubby grandson, okay? All right, all right. You must keep your word. Mom is looking forward to holding her grandson in this lifetime. Xiao Pujuan stepped out of the ward, wiping the moisture from his eyes. The biggest regret in his life was letting down his parents. He couldn't let his mother leave this world with regrets.